The way of Christ is not the way of this world. And this is a truth. But even if I, as I say it, I realize that the way of the world is how the churches are run. The pattern of this world is how every business organization is run. And that goes back to Old Testament times, of course, where there were kings, pharaohs, Caesar, autocrats, tyrants, dictators, where there was one man at the top, and then a hierarchy of power from top down. And of course, when the children of Israel were enslaved by the Egyptians, they'd been there for 400 years. And that's roughly every 40 years, another generation. Ten generations of Jewish families, and after 400 years, they were enslaved by the ruling power through Pharaoh. And Pharaoh and the armies, the slave masters, had the children of Israel acting as slaves within the nation of Egypt. So the nation of Israel were enslaved by the Egyptians. And you know the story very well. God raised up Moses, who had been a prince in Pharaoh's household, brought up by Pharaoh's daughter, the princess. And so when Moses led the children of Israel out from Egypt to the promised land, he was one man who God had appointed, plus he had his brother Aaron and others who were close to him. And all the disputes of the children of Israel traveling across the desert to the promised land were settled by God through Moses. And you know that Moses was told to appoint 70 elders, if you like, mature Jews, to help him to run the nation, to govern the nation according to God's way, Yahweh, according to the law, the Ten Commandments. And when they entered into the Promised Land, it was Joshua and Caleb who went in as the head of the nation, the head of the army. And so they were at the top of the ruling power over the nation, and God used them. Then came the judges, judging over Israel. Then, as you know, the people wanted a king to be like everybody else, all the other nations around them, the tribes. They wanted a king. And so God gave them Saul, and then the anointed king, David, came. And so that is the system for ruling a nation, and that is the pattern of this world. God's pattern was the judge. The world's pattern was a king. And of course, the worldly kings were not godly kings. They weren't believers in Yahweh. The nations that surrounded Canaan, the promised land, they had all their pagan gods. And God had told his people, the children of Israel, not to intermarry with the foreign nations around them, and not to run after their gods. But of course, disobedience is the heart of sin. And of course, that's what they did. They intermarried with the other nations. 
By the time of Jesus Christ, it was well established how Israel was being run between kings and the priesthood system. Religious government, political government, and of course Rome had subjugated the country to be ruled by Caesar through a governor. So Jesus arrives as the king, the Messiah, the king of Israel. And of course, he is the power over all powers. But God himself demonstrated through his only begotten son that the greatest in the kingdom is the servant. And Jesus came to serve and to demonstrate the real kingdom of God is about service. It's about submission. It's about humility. It's about favouring one another, preferring one another, and doing good, especially to the household of faith. Of course, Jesus did good to everyone. He was there for everyone to do them good. And those who came to him, he helped them, healed them, taught them, delivered them from demons, and he set them on the right road for the rest of their lives, if they would only believe what he said, what he taught, how he was. So the way of Christ, the way of the Holy Spirit, is not the way of this world. It's not the pattern of this world. So here we have history. We've arrived at the 9th of October 2022. And so-called civilization is developing increasingly according to the pattern of this world, but, all, but it's actually ruled by the enemy. The god of this age is the devil. And Jesus told the truth to the Pharisees, the ruling class of religious people who subjugated people of Israel by the rules, the regulations, the laws. And they oppressed the people. But Jesus told them the truth, that they didn't recognize him or his father, God. Yahweh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They didn't recognize who Jesus was, the Messiah. He was the Messiah. And they didn't recognize him. And they claimed that Abraham was their father. But Jesus put them right. He said, no, the devil is your father, and you are sons of the devil. And such is the blind guide who guides people today with their religion. And they believe that their religious service enables them to go to heaven. And they think that they're saved by their religious duties, their religious service, their obedience to the law of their religion. And that's all religion. So Christian religion itself, Christianity, doesn't save anybody. Going to church doesn't save anybody. Doing all the rituals doesn't save anybody. Being ordained, being, being uh, theologically trained through a Bible college, it doesn't save anybody. Salvation comes from Jesus Christ. No one can be forgiven their sins without the shedding of blood. And we're not talking about animal sacrifices. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who was slain. He was crucified. He shed his blood. He was broken, bruised, beaten, stricken. Nailed to a cross. He died physically. He gave his life as the payment for sin, past, present, future. For those who believe, 
they are forgiven. So today I was listening to the gospel being read on, on my headphones and I was reminded of the parable that Jesus told that a man hired some workers. And at the beginning of the day, he hired a number of workers for a set amount for the day. Then he decided midday, I'd need some more workers. So he hired some more. And as you know, the last hour, he hired some more workers for the last hour. And then when he came to settle up the payment, he paid them all the same. And the ones who had worked all day were disgruntled because the one who worked for an hour got the same as he did. And the ones who worked for half a day, they too were disgruntled because they were thinking that they would have more money. But they all agreed to receive the payment for the work done. The point is, today I realised no matter how many years you've been saved by the blood of the Lamb, there are those coming into Christ today. They are as saved as you are. They will receive the riches of Christ in glory as you will, as I will. And it doesn't matter if you've been saved for five years, 10 years, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, you are given eternal life. Our gratitude to God, is, it must be genuine. Our repentance before God must be genuine. Jesus Christ has forgiven us for our sins. And you must hear him say to you, now go and sin no more. And it's no good you argue with Jesus and trying to build a case that you will sin. The woman caught in adultery was forgiven. She was about to be executed. And the real governor of this world <clears throat> set her free from the prison, from death row. And he said, neither shall I condemn you. Now go and sin no more. God has given us every opportunity to repent. <clears throat> Even today. There are many people out there, they say there is no God. But we know, according to Scripture, all creation points to the Creator. And we know the Creator is God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God is God. And God made us in His image. The image of God is within us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But we're not God. We can never be God. There is only one God in heaven. God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We're not God. But the Spirit of the living God lives in us and He is the minister within us by the Holy Spirit, the teacher. God is the teacher and He teaches us within, within our conscience, within our mind, within our emotions. Our spirit is the temple within us, not made by human hands, not made by scientists, not made in the test tube. We are not made in the test tube. Our spirit, our human spirit, was made by God before we came into our mother's womb. Jeremiah 1.5 Before I created you in the womb, I knew you, says God. So God knows us. And by the Holy Spirit, we know God. We know who God is. We know what God is saying. He's given us the scripture. He's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He guides us into all truth. He reminds us of what Jesus said and did, according to scripture, the four gospels. So today, today is the day of salvation. No one's promised tomorrow. We only have today. 
And God says today, do not let the sun go down on your anger. It's no good you being angry with your brothers and sisters, because if you say you love God, you cannot be angry with your brothers and sisters. Because if you are angry with your brothers and sisters in Christ, you don't love God. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Put away bitterness, anger, rage, brawling, slander, gossip, libel. These things will keep you out from heaven. There are many churchgoers who believe they're saved, in their minds or their feelings. But you know deep down you're not born again. You haven't got that testimony. Once I was, now I am. There comes a point you realise. The peace of Jesus Christ is within us because the Prince of Peace is within us. The Kingdom of Heaven is within us, because the King is within us by His Spirit. The Spirit of the Living God lives within the Temple of the Holy Spirit within us. This is where we make our sacrifices, within us, within our own will, we decide to resist the devil, to submit to God, to humble ourselves to God's will, the Father's will in Christ. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You can make a hundred sacrifices every day for the rest of your life. You can kill a hundred lambs every day and sprinkle the blood on yourself. It doesn't do anything. Taking communion every day doesn't do anything. Sacraments, religious ceremonies don't do anything. Going to church doesn't save you, doesn't keep you saved. It's it's not good to stop fellowshipping with other believers. But there comes a point you realize the real fellowship is with the Holy Spirit and with the same Holy Spirit who's in the other believers, who are not the religious ones, but they are the born again ones. True brothers and sisters in Christ, friends in Christ, born of Christ, the same Lord Jesus Christ. So, it doesn't matter if you've been saved today, last week, last year, or 50, 60 years ago. Jesus Christ is coming soon, and it is for us to be ready and prepare ourselves. If we could prepare others, we would. But of course, it comes down to individual choice. Do we choose Christ today? Well, I can speak for myself. Yes, I do. Where else can I go? Only Christ has the words of eternal life. Without Christ, I'm nothing. Without the Holy Spirit, I have nothing. There's only one way to heaven through Jesus Christ. John fourteen six. Jesus Christ uniquely is the only way to heaven. All roads may lead up a mountain of faith, but when they get to the top of their, quotes, career or profession, as leaders of their churches, they find there's a cross. And unless they come through the cross, by the blood of the Lamb, they cannot enter into heaven. Jesus Christ 
comes to live in us if we humble ourselves to him, admit we're sinners and repent, and believe that he, ju- he died for us, he shed his blood for us individually, for me and my sins. And when he comes in, he's Lord of my life, spirit, soul, and body. And that should be your p- position with Christ today if you are born of God. Do not resist the Holy Spirit. Be baptized with the Holy Spirit, with fire, and you'll find that God, the Holy Spirit, burns off the dross within you, that he transforms you within. He strips away stuff within your thinking, your attitudes, your feelings, that are no longer appropriate for you as a born-again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no hierarchy within the body of Christ. There is only one body of Christ throughout this world, and we're not an organization run by man. The Holy Spirit leads us all. It comes down to prophecy. Are you open to be spoken to by God through a third party could be a stranger, somebody you don't really know, can give you a word from the Lord if you are open to receive the body of Christ. Christ is in us, for us, and to help us through us, the body ministry. There's no hierarchy in the body of Christ, different roles and functions, absolutely, Different gifts of the Spirit, yes. We're all here on the same journey, going to the same heaven in the same Christ, the same Holy Spirit, the same blood, same faith, the same baptism, the same Father over all. Ephesians 4 and 5, Isaiah 35. The highway of holiness put on Christ. Jesus says, Remain in me and I'll remain in you. We are the branches of the vine and Jesus is the root. Jesus is the vine, the root, and we are the branches. The cultivated olive tree. The root is God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we are branches producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So let's leave it there. 9th of October 2022, one day at a time, going forward in Christ, one day of salvation at a time. Preach the true gospel of the true Christ. We're here for the lost sheep, those who have yet to come in. Of course, we encourage one another in the flock of true sheep, but we are in Christ seeking that which is lost one day of salvation at a time. God bless you, brethren of the one God. John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. Pray for us as we pray for you, and we'll speak again by the grace of God. God bless.